Another Texas megachurch has found themselves caught in scandal. Their lead pastor was forced to resign, and now we see new developments happening. And these new developments show that these church leaders at Cross Timbers Church, they're handling it better than many other Texas churches have handled these situations. Here's the initial news report that will bring you up to speed on the details surrounding Sunday's announcement of their lead pastor resigning and their plan moving forward. And then on the other side of that, I will detail you the things, the changes that have been made since then and how the elders have handled it. Another North Texas pastor just resigned from another North Texas church. This time it happened at Cross Timbers Church in Argyle. It is the latest in a string of incidents involving local pastors. Our Matt Houston spent the day digging for answers. In this room, there's a lot of sadness and shock, isn't there? In a live streamed sermon that's been taken down, Cross Timbers church leaders told their congregation they'd accepted Pastor Josiah Anthony's resignation. He'd been in a long struggle with his emotional and mental health, they said. Throughout this struggle, some of Josiah's decisions and actions were inappropriate and hurtful to current and former members of the CT family and staff. The elders said Anthony was not forthcoming and transparent, but did not explain what actually happened. Anthony did not comment when WFAA reached him Sunday. I'm grateful the Lord is near to the brokenhearted, aren't you? In their message, the elders acknowledged the string of scandals affecting North Texas congregations. At least five DFW pastors have resigned, been fired, or arrested since early June. Which is an elder. None drew more attention than Robert Morris, who left Southlake's Gateway Church after a woman accused him of molesting her when she was as young as 12. To be clear, we believe that this was sexual abuse of a child. Any description falling short of that does not reflect our position. Gateway elders apologized to the accuser during Saturday's sermon. Moments later, they thanked Morris's son, who says he intends to start a new church instead of taking over Gateway. That had been the plan before all this. I'm Max. Max Lucado, a San Antonio pastor and well-known Christian we author, church. will preach at Gateway while elders look for a new pastor. At Cross Timbers... This is not going to be a typical service. Byron Copeland will act as interim lead pastor. He was on staff at Gateway Church for almost 20 years. In Tarrant County, I'm Matt Houston. Now, that plan lasted a few days. By Thursday, the elders had sent out a different email, an update to their congregation, changing their plans moving forward. In this video, we're going to talk about all the details and pull out some lessons that we can learn because I believe the elders are actually handling this the right way, especially considering the new details that have come about. Now, before we get into the details of that, I just want to say, hey, welcome to the channel. This is Preaching Lead, and my name is Brandon. I'm so glad that you're on this video. If you're a follower of Jesus, you're certainly going to get something out of this video. And if you're also a pastor or church leader, this channel is for you. Normally on this channel, we talk about how to preach memorable, faithful, sticky sermons, and also how to lead the church intentionally. Every now and then, we look at a case study so that we can learn lessons as church leaders on how to lead well and how to avoid leading not well. And hey, if you are a pastor, then be sure to go to preachandlead.com slash guide. There you can get my free 10-step guide to writing a sticky sermon. It'll help you go from blank page to finish sermon, and not just any sermon, but a sermon that is memorable, that is to the hearts of your listeners, and focused on them actually doing what Jesus says. It'll help you save time in sermon prep, and it'll help you prepare a better message. Preachandlead.com slash guide. Get your free 10-step guide to writing a sticky sermon there. Okay, the, the new details. This comes from churchleaders.com. Texas Church discloses inappropriate and hurtful actions that led to pastor's resignation. So they get more details about that. And the elders revise the plan for the interim leadership. This is huge, y'all. This is huge. Let's, let's go through this. The elders of Cross Timbers Church in Argyll, Argyle, Texas, provided have provided more details regarding the circumstances of Pastor Josiah Anthony's resignation, as well as an amended plan for interim leadership. On Sunday, July 28th, church elder John Chalk announced Anthony's resignation during service, saying that Anthony had been battling mental health issues for some time and that some of his decisions and actions were inappropriate and hurtful to current and former members of the CT family and staff, Cross Timbers Church. 
the church announced that Byron Copeland, Cross Timber Church's executive pastor, would step in as interim lead pastor before coming on to staff at Cross Timber's church. Copeland was on staff at where? Texas Megachurch Gateway Church in various executive level pastoral positions from 2003 to 2023. Any of you have been paying attention, you know about Robert Morris's resignation and all of the controversy around that and how that was just really bad. Well, Gateway Church has been embroiled in scandal since June when allegations that Robert Morris, the church's founding pastor, had sexually abused a child in the 1980s uh, became publicly known. Morris resigned in disgrace on June 18th. Several lawsuits involving abuse claims have been brought against Gateway, including a 2023 suit in which Copeland was named. This was the guy who was tapped on the shoulder to lead Cross Timbers Church after their lead pastor was had resigned. He was going to be the interim lead pastor. But now they found out in the lawsuit, a former church employee said that when she came to work as an administrative assistant at Gateway in 2018, she had just undergone treatment for cancer and claimed that she was subjected to ongoing disparaging comments about her appearance and unwanted romantic advances from the pastor she reported to. Oh my. The formal employee, former employee said that when she spoke to Copeland, then executive pastor of Gateway Church, he sympathized with her but did nothing. The former employee further claimed that sometime later, Copeland aggressively confronted her and threatened to fire her if she didn't shut up and stop stirring drama. By the way, if you're not familiar with church leadership structures, an executive pastor is essentially the right-hand man to the lead pastor. They're the person who oftentimes leads the staff and the, the operations. They're kind of like the, the COO in a business, chief operations officer, to, to make it very understandable you know, it's, it's obviously different from the secular world, but it is similar in terms of work. They're, they're the ones who are really overseeing the staff and all of the dynamics there. So that was his responsibility. In an email on Thursday, August 1st, elders of Cross Timbers amended their original plan to have Copeland serve as the interim pastor and provided more details into the events and circumstances that led to Anthony's resignation. In the email, elders acknowledge that we have made mistakes along the way. We should have communicated more directly and clearly early on. The assumptions that some made about our church due to our lack of clarity were far more extreme than the facts. We caused unnecessary speculation and distress, and we are sorry. The email continued. Remember, I've, I've talked about this in all of these instances that I've, that I've walked through in the channel that too often church leaders and any leaders in an organization resort to institutional self-preservation more than they resort to transparency as leaders. And that is just not helpful practice, or is it wise, or is it godly? The elders then disclosed that they had received a concerning report of inappropriate communication on social media with a woman who was a former member of our church. This was taken very seriously by the elders, and we, gra we were grateful it was brought to our attention. Story goes on, Josiah has been one open in his preaching about his mental health issues, and he suggested that his actions were a result of his struggles, the elders said. However, upon further investigation, we discovered that Josiah was not forthcoming or transparent and had a concerning pattern of behavior communicating inappropriately with women. While the communication was not sexual, the elders described it as excessively personal and overly familiar. What does that mean? <laughs> In light of this inappropriate communication, the elders asked for Anthony's resignation, which he submitted. The elders went on to say that after Anthony's resignation, they learned about additional inappropriate comments he made in text messages and through social media that were sexual in nature. We want to be very clear. We do not consider any of these instances to be emotional affairs, the elders said, because the power dynamic of these interactions were never equal. We do not consider these to be consensual. This behavior will not be tolerated at our church. What do they mean by that? It's the, the phrase is clergy sexual abuse, that when someone has a spiritual leader, the power dynamics in that relationship do not lend themselves to be consensual because a pastor uh, having a relationship like that with a congregant has all kinds of, of unseen power dynamics at play that, that in many ways it's it's taking advantage of someone. They go on and say, thank you to the women who were courageous coming forward. 
The elder said, we believe you are grateful for your willingness to share your experiences, and we are deeply sorry that your trust was violated. The Cross Timber elders then explained their revised plan for interim leadership, announcing that Toby Slaw, the church's founding pastor, will step in to serve as the interim lead pastor. Slaw, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, Slaw, will assume the main teaching role as well as many of his former duties while he was senior pastor here at Cross Timbers, including supervising staff and leading in all executive functions. The elevation of Toby to this position is not due to the lapse of Byron's service to Cross Timbers, the elder said. Rather, it is Brian's gracious deference to the most trusted and qualified person to tend to the hearts of Cross Timbers and lead our church family forward during this time. That's really interesting. That, that paragraph is very interesting. We are commencing our search for a per- permanent lead pastor and ask that you also pray for discernment and wisdom in this process. The email concluded, we love you. We are here for you. That, that's an interesting paragraph, that second to last one. The elevation of Toby to this position is not due to the lapse of Byron's service to Cross Timbers. They, I think they're trying to say, hey, this is not because of anything he did while here. But uh, you're reading between the lines, it would seem that the instances and the allegations at Gateway that he's involved in were enough for them to say, hey, I don't know if this is a wise thing. And after that came to light, which it seems like maybe just benefit of the, of the doubt, the elders didn't know about that lawsuit. We'll just assume that. And if that's the case, then I, I think these elders, while they may not have gotten it right at the beginning, like when, as they made the announcement on Sunday, they resorted to vague language, left room for uh, conjecture and and people guessing at what the real issue was. And this is so common in churches that a lot of times there's so, there's there's an assumption that there's more under the surface because oftentimes there is because oftentimes these announcements are vague and, and not specific. And it just lends itself to a lack of trust between the congregation and the leaders. And I believe that them doing this and, and sharing what they discovered because there were, there were women in the church or at least a woman in the church shared her experience with this pastor who had resigned this is huge. Their ability to move forward in this is going to be so much more strengthened because they chose transparency in the end. It took them a few days uh, and, and they didn't know about this part, but, but they chose when they did get the information, they chose transparency. And that is so huge. So again, if you're in leadership and you find yourself in in a situation where there's there's unfortunate details. It's it's not fun to have to give updates like this. But be honest. Be real. There's so much talk about the church as a family, and that's a biblical idea. But oftentimes, the church doesn't treat it that way. Or it does, but it's a dysfunctional family where we just kind of brush things under the rug. It's like, at this point, it's, it's, it's wrong for us to talk about. And this dysfunction can oftentimes just rear its ugly head and show itself to be front and center in the midst of scandal. And and I commend these elders for handling it this way. And I believe that their search is going to be better because they're going to get pastors who are, who are healthier to be willing to step into that. And I believe their, 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 their people are going to trust those elders far more now than they probably would have or were on Monday. This is huge. I'm curious from your standpoint, did they make the right decision based on what we know? You know, it doesn't sound like Byron did anything at that church, but his past has at least caught up to him in this situation. um, The, the interim, did they make, did they, did they handle this the right way? Let me know in the comments below. And Hey, if you want some more good news of seeing another church and and a pastor doing things really well, then check out this video. It might even bring you to tears on how well this was handled in an awkward situation and just see how God worked in it. Check out this video and I'll see you there.